So here is a hypothesis testing question. We know that we have a weekly wages random variable and we know it's, it's normally distributed with a standard deviation of 2.1, so a variance of 2.1 squared. Remember, we always have the variance here. Unknown is the mean of that random variable. Now, someone claims that that should be 72.40 and we have a random sample of 35 and the mean income in that sample is 73.2. Two, so that's W bar and N is 35. So with that information, the question is what null hypothesis would you specify? And here, if someone claims something, the null hypothesis is 72, that something is equal to something, we use that as a null hypothesis, 72.40. For the alternative, we're being asked for two options, a two-tailed alternative, then um, the alternative would be mu w is unequal to 72.4, so that's two-tailed. The one-tailed, upper-tailed alternative is that mu w is larger than 72.4. So for the second case, we will only reject h naught if we get significantly larger values than 72.4. Okay, so with that, under the belt, we'll now go on to uh, part three to calculate, to actually perform the hypothesis test. An additional bit of information is the alpha and the significance level of 5%. So here's 2.3, part three. And we'll go through all the tests of a hypothesis test. These are the st all the steps. These are the steps you will always have to perform in a hypothesis test. So the, the first is setting the hypothesis. We've done that already. And now we run the tests of the two versions, the two different alternative hypotheses. We'll run them parallel to each other. Uh, so we can see what the difference between a two-tailed and one-tailed test is. So on the left-hand side, we'll have the two-tailed test with the alternative of mu w being unequal to 72.4 on the right hand side we'll have the upper tail test we discussed the hypothesis already in the second step you always need to be clear about your significance level that's the probability of a type 1 error you set that as a researcher or the question gives it to you the next step is to set out what the test statistic is so here it's a t test and it's going to be w bar minus the value for mu w from the null hypothesis, here that's 72.4, divided by the standard deviation of w bar. Now here we know, or you should know, that the standard deviation of w bar is the standard deviation of w divided by square root n. So that sigma w comes from our information, that's 2.10, that was given, we assume that we know that, that was given in the question, and n is the sample size. So the test statistic for the upper tail test turns out to be exactly the same, okay, no change. Exactly the same test statistic. So now we need to know what the distribution of this test statistic is. That test statistic is a random variable and under the conditions of this question, we know that the t-stat is normally distributed. And that's the case because we know that w is normally distributed and we know the standard deviation or variance. Only then we know that t is normally distributed. Next, very important, before we really look at the data, you want to write down the decision rule. Here it's going to be reject h naught if the p-value is smaller than alpha. In fact, that's the easy decision rule because that will always be the same. If you use p-values, the decision rule will always read like this. Two-tailed, one-tailed test, doesn't matter. But if we want to use the test statistic, then for the two-tailed test, we reject h naught if the absolute value of t is larger than alpha n alpha over 2. So that's the value from normal distribution that cuts off alpha over 2. If we are looking at the upper tail, then the decision rule is reject h naught if t is larger than the alpha value from the normal distribution, i.e. the value that cuts off alpha. So the absolute value and alpha over half comes for two tail tests and the larger on the right hand side and the alpha comes from a one tail test. And it's possibly best to think about this graphically why that is the case. So let's look at the two tail test first. Here's our distribution for the test statistic. And what we are looking for now as critical values are 
two values on the edges of the distribution that together cut off alpha of the probability and we'll do it symmetrically so on each side we cut off alpha over half so it's two and a half percent turns out from normal distribution that's 1.96 and negative 1.96 that cut these values cut off two and a half percent on each tail and we shall reject h naught if we find a t stat that is either larger than 1.96 or smaller than negative 1.96. And if we find anything in between, we shall not reject the null hypothesis. So inside is the acceptance region, outside the rejection region. And in words, this is the decision rule reject H0 if absolute value of T is larger than 1.96. What about the one-tailed, upper-tailed test? And you should be able to do the lower-tailed example, just uh, which is just a mirror image of this upper-tailed test. We're only interested in values that are larger than 72.4. So we will only reject if our t-test becomes significantly large. So we will find that value, critical value, that cuts off 5% or alpha. And if we get a t stat to the right of this, we reject. If we get a t stat smaller than that critical value, we do not reject. It turns out the value from a normal distribution is 1.645. And that is the value that cuts off 5% on the right hand side of the normal distribution. So with this under the belt, now we can look at the data. Now we do calculations. And you should really always first write down the decision rule before you do calculations. So if you plug in all the values in our t-stat, we have w bar, we have sigma w, and we have n, and the 72.4, then we can calculate the values. Okay, so the w bar we have, and here are the values, 2.2537. That is our t-statistic. Okay, let me write down how we calculated that, 73.2 minus 72.4, divided by 2.1 over square root 35. That's 2.25. So since we are asked to to use two rules, the, the classical rule, uh, this, um, have a hypothesis test, and the p-value will also want to calculate the p-value. So how do we do this? Now for this example, our test statistic 2.25 graphically is Actually, let me redraw these pictures to make them look a little less cluttered. So here's the distribution for the two-tailed test. Here's the distribution for the one-tailed test. And we'll actually start with the one-tailed test. So the test statistic is somewhere here. We're only interested in values which are in extreme values to the right. So what the p-value actually is, is the size of the area to the right of our observed test statistic. So that gray area, the size of that is going to be the p-value. And this is going to be uh, formally the probability that the standard normally distributed random variable is larger than 2.25 or 1 minus the probability that z is smaller than 2.25. That we can, of course, read off a standard normal table. Here it is. So we merely need to uh, identify the uh, probability value for so that's equal to 2.25, so that's the sixth value in, or 0.9878. So that is therefore 1 minus 0 0.9878, and that is 0 0.0122. That is the p-value for that right-tailed hypothesis test. So if we now go to the two-tailed test, well, actually, since we have the same t stat, we'll find the same probability in the right-hand tail here. But now we're not only interested in extreme positive values, but also extreme negative values. So they get the t test, at, sorry, the p-value for this test. We also need to look at the equivalent size in the left-hand tail. So the value of the probability underneath the standard normal distribution smaller than negative 2.25. That value is therefore multiplied by 2 to get the p-value because we add up both areas, gray highlighted areas, and the p-value is 0 0.0244. So with that information, we can now come to a conclusion of the test statistic, uh, of the hypothesis test. So we'll do that again.
for both our two-tail test and the upper tail test. We'll start with the two-tail test and we'll just refer to the um, p-value decision rule. The uh, decision rule was that we reject H0 if the p-value is smaller than alpha. The p-value is 0.0244, alpha 5% and therefore we reject H0. And equally for the upper tail test, the same decision rule, p-value was 0.0122, alpha 0.05, and therefore the decision is reject H0. With this, we shall move on to question three, which is a sort of follow-on question. Very similar in the setup. We know W to be normally distributed, but now this is the difference, is that we do not know the variance of W, and that will have consequences. A sample of 15, so it's somewhat smaller, and the sample standard deviation is 250. We didn't need that previously because we knew the uh, variance of W. So here is our information as much as we extracted it so far, sample size of 15. And if we know the standard deviation of W bar, we know that is S over square root of N. We will need that later, so we can already uh, highlight that here, What, how that's calculated, 2.1 over square root of 15. So if this is unknown, then we need to use a sample estimate. So we need to use S, that's our sample estimate of sigma W, and therefore it'll turn out that the t-statistic we shall use as above is not going to be normally distributed, but t-distributed with n minus 1 degrees of freedom. Okay, so that's the major change that will now occur due to the fact that we do not know the variance of w. So the hypothesis, well, again, we're asked to do both tests from above, the two-tailed and the uh, uh, upper tailed, the hypothesis and the significance level are exactly the same. So the first difference arises when we look at the test statistic. This is now going to be W bar minus the null hypothesis, which is the same, or the value, the hypothesized value for mu W from the null hypothesis. Now divided by S W bar, so the standard deviation of our sample average s over square root n and that is now t distributed with 15 minus 1 degrees of freedom that's the distribution of the test statistic that's the same for both two-sided and upper tail tests now decision rule will have to differentiate again between the on the left hand side the two tail test and on the right hand side the um, upper tail test um, the Using the p-value decision rule, that is anyway going to be the same. Reject H0 if p-value is smaller than alpha. And again, we say reject H0 if the absolute value of t is larger than a critical value. But that now comes from the t-distribution. We say that for the two-tail test. For the one-tail test, we have the same decision rule in using the p-value. And using the critical value, we say reject H0 if the t-statistic is larger than the critical value, but that now comes from the t-distribution, cutting off alpha percent of the probability on the right-hand side. So, with these decision rules noted down, we can move on to the calculation. Now, this is just plugging in values in the formula, which you have under the test statistic, and the value is 1.2394. And now what we need is critical values. For the two-tailed test, we look here, 14 degrees of freedom. So here the critical values is going to be 2.145. And for the upper-tailed test, we need to go back to the table. One-tailed 5%, that's 1.761. So that's a critical value here, 1.761. All right, what we now can do is we can um, decide. We use the decision rules using the critical values. You can see that the t stat is not larger than the critical value of 2.145. Therefore, we do not reject on the right hand side. We come to the same conclusion because 1.2394 is smaller than 1.761. So that was using the um, the decision using the critical value and the test statistic.
what about the what about the p values um, which I forgot so we'll go back to the p values it's easiest again to think of a little graph here we have now the t distribution with 14 degrees of freedom rather than the normal distribution so now we already know that the value of 2.145 that one will actually cut off two and a half percent from that particular t distribution so if we are using the t distribution we can only determine using the tables the p values fairly roughly so here's our test statistic 1.24 approximately and we know that the p value is graphically uh, equivalent to the area underneath the distribution to the right of that value for the one tail test okay so now let's go to the t table we know the 10% uh, critical value that is 1.345 so that value cuts off 10% to the right so all we can say at this stage and using the information in the table is that the p-value is larger than 0.1 and that is for the one-tailed for the upper tail test. For the two-tailed test on the left hand side however we again need to consider that we are also rejecting for equally extreme values on the left hand side to get the p-value all we need to do is to multiply that p-value by 2 but since we only have a rough inequality of 0.1 we'll just need to multiply the inequality by 2 so 2 times 0.1 the p-value is larger than that for the two-tailed test.